Lesson 10.3 is about concurrent lines. The first theorem in this lesson is about when you take a triangle and you bisect each of the three angles, uh, all of the angle bisectors intersect in one point. And we call, the, we call these um, segments or these lines concurrent because concurrent lines are line, two or more lines that intersect in this one point. So anyway, all of the angle bisectors are concurrent, and they intersect in the middle of the triangle, um, and, and, uh, and that point of intersection is equidistant from the sides of the angle. So if I was to take a perpendicular from that point of intersection to each of the sides, oops, that, that wouldn't be perpendicular, uh, to each of the sides of the angle, Uh, those would all be the same length. And we'll later see that we can, put a, we can inscribe a circle in this triangle using that point of intersection as the center of the circle. On the flip side of that last theorem, we have the next theorem, which is when we bisect the sides of a triangle um, they also, all of those uh, perpendicular bisectors meet, they're concurrent, they meet at one point of intersection in the middle of the triangle, and that point of intersection is equidistant from the angles of the triangle. So in the prior theorem, we bisect angles, point of intersection equidistant from sides. In this theorem, we bisect sides, and the point of intersection is equidistant from the angles. So what it means is if I was to take a line, a segment from that point of intersection out to each of the three angles, that those would be equidistant. And we'll later see that I could use that center point of intersection as the center of a circle with a radius uh, of the length from the, that point of intersection out to the vertex of an angle. And it would uh, circumscribe a circle around this triangle. Okay, the next theorem is about altitudes of a triangle. And remember, altitudes come out of the vertex of an angle, and they hit the opposite side at a perpendicular. So uh, it turns out that all of the three altitudes of a triangle are also concurrent, but where they intersect depends on the type of triangle we have. Notice that with an acute triangle, that the point of intersection of the three altitudes is inside the triangle. Now, in the next scenario, I have uh, an obtuse triangle. And again, the altitudes are all concurrent, but notice that they meet outside of the original uh, black triangle. It's because the altitudes, two of the altitudes of an obtuse triangle are actually outside the triangle. And they intersect outside the triangle, as does uh, the third. So obtuse triangles, altitudes intersect outside. And in the last scenario, we have a right triangle, and notice that if I first do an altitude out of the right angle to the hypotenuse, um, there's one altitude. But then when I come up, say, to the top angle to do an altitude, which hits the opposite side of the perpendicular, notice that I actually trace one of the sides of the triangle. And then when I draw one from the bottom right uh, vertex, to hit the opposite side, I also trace one of the sides of the triangle. So all three of those points meet um, on the triangle themselves. So again, the altitudes are concurrent. They all intersect in one place, one point, and that point is actually on the triangle when it's a right triangle. So the last theorem is about mediums, medians of a um, triangle. Remember, remember that medians go from the vertex of an angle to the midpoint of the opposite side. And uh, the theorem is this. Uh, the medians are concurrent. They all intersect in one point. And that point is two-thirds of the distance from the vertex to the side of the triangle. So as an example, if uh, this little guy down here is three, then the dis and that would be one third of the length of that median. Two thirds of it, it goes from the vertex of the angle to the point of intersection. So that part would be six. 
So the whole thing would be 9, and two-thirds of it would be between the vertex of the angle and the point of intersection. Uh, if this piece here was 4, then this piece would be, this segment would be 8. So if it was 12 long, uh, from the vertex of the angle to the point of intersection would be two-thirds of it, or 8. And let's pretend that this segment here is 5. That would be one-third of the length of that median, and the other two-thirds of the median would be here. So anyway, that is it.